What's up guys, my name is Jordan Quinn. I'm a former national level classic physique competitor. I've got a powerlifting total of more than 1200 pounds. Neither of those happened naturally. Then I almost died. I had acute viral myocarditis about three years ago. I got completely off all performance enhancing drugs. So you know what I've decided after seeing all of the kind of trends around anabolic use that I wanna see how much muscle I can put back on without taking any PEDs. It's not the same as claiming my lifetime natural. I'm gonna be able to make progress that I would never Never have been able to make it I not spent time taking anabolics. But I think it's gonna be really interesting for you guys to see what's possible when you decide to prioritize your health, come off the juice. Not juice! It's a protein thick! And still just work really, really hard. I'm gonna be explaining why I got off steroids in the first place, including my TRT. We'll talk about how difficult it can be to come off and all the aspects that went into that and what that was like for me. Then we're gonna talk about my diet and training and what that's gonna look like for the next month. So I talked about this a little bit in my last video, my reaction to Jeff Nippert's steroids are awesome. But for a quick TLDR, I got put on TRT when I was 20 years old because my test was just barely over 300 nanograms per deciliter and also because I was looking for a doctor who'd be willing to prescribe that to a 20 year old. I spent the next three years competing and cycling through a variety of different compounds. After I recovered from that incident, it actually took me in another few years to get off TRT. I decided to get off TRT for a few different reasons. One, I was just tired of jabbing myself in the ass. Two, I was in the middle of applying for a visa to move to Japan, and I also had a three-month sabbatical planned in Europe. So I was comfortable with doing this at home because I was doing this all through undergrad, underground labs at this point. I was less comfortable with the idea of doing it as I kind of backpacked around through varying you know, borders in Europe. And also, I really didn't want to deal with the potential bureaucratic nightmares and just who knows what in Japan. At this point, I had no idea if my natural testosterone production would ever come back. And I was really worried about that, but I figured there's not gonna be a better time for me to try than now before I go on these trips. So I decided to get off. I followed more or less Dave Palumbo's protocol that he administers to people who wanna become fertile again, you know, professional bodybuilders who decide they wanna become fathers. If you wanna learn more about that, uh, the link is in the description. Again, I'm not a medical professional. I can't tell you what to do or not do, but the information's out there. And while I do think this helped me tremendously, and I don't think I would have been able to recover any sort of natural production without something like this, the first one to three months of, after coming off were awful. I had panic attacks on a fairly regular basis, bad enough that I actually called 911. My anxiety was through the roof. My body dysmorphia had reared its ugly head. I was chronically fatigued, and when I was in Europe, I often slept for 10 to 12 hours at a time, so thank God for that sabbatical. And my hard-earned muscle tissue all but entirely wasted away. At my heaviest, I was 235 pounds, and by the time I kind of settled, I was in the low 170s, which I hadn't seen since high school. So while all of that might not sound like a stunning endorsement for coming off the sauce, I am Kanye West, and I approve this message. I can promise you that it was worth it. Nearly every single aspect of my life has improved since then. And that's one thing I really wanna urge young people to understand. There's a not insignificant chance you're gonna do irreversible damage to your HB HBTA. You might struggle with fertility later in life if you ever decide to have kids, though I know the doomers aren't exactly doing that. You're playing with fire to be on these compounds, especially the things that I see people taking and the amounts that I see them taking at the age they're taking them. Might seem cool to be on stuff now and to get all these quick gains, but trust me, after years of pinning yourself and your balls getting so small they can almost shrink back inside of you, it starts to lose its luster a little bit. And really, that's why I've decided to partake in this experiment in the first place. The amount of frankly pure idiocy I see on social media now, especially from young people, is deeply concerning. This might all seem hypocritical from somebody who did go to the dark side, so to speak, but Knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have done it or I would have waited a lot longer. I want to show people that it might not be too late for you if you've decided to get on the sauce. You can still come off and prioritize your health and make incredible progress. Being on stuff, especially for a prolonged period of time, does fundamentally change what's available to you versus what would have been available to you were you 100% natural. You can still look awesome. You can still enjoy the gym and take your training and diet seriously without risking the long term. And if you haven't started gear yet and you're on the fence and you see all these people online making the jump, I just, I urge you to move cautiously and slowly and to really consider that because you're not making a choice for right now or a month. You're making a choice that potentially impacts the rest of your life. So diet, this is the part that I am most nervous about. I've gotten very used to eating like a bird over the last three years or so. I know from years of competing and dieting and training pretty seriously that 
both naturally and enhanced. I can fairly successfully recomp, meaning gain some muscle and lose some body fat at the same time, anywhere between 2,900 and 3,100 calories. My daily maintenance tends to be about 3,500, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a guess that for a nice bulk, 4,000 is gonna do it for me. Last time I really tried to bulk, I was pushing 4,500, 5,000 a day, somewhere in there. That said, it's been years since I've tracked anything nutrition-wise. In fact, I stopped tracking everything several years before I came off TRT, so it's been five or six years probably. So I, I don't really know anymore, but I think 4,000 can be a safe bet. If you look at all the literature, it's very well established now that if you're in a caloric surplus, you really don't need more than a gram per pound of body weight of protein. Now, if you're cutting, I think there's a really strong case to be made for significantly more than one gram per pound, but that's a separate discussion. So we're gonna err a little bit on the side of caution and go for 200 grams of protein a day, which is 800 calories, and I do tend to do much better on a higher carbohydrate diet, so of my 3,200 remaining calories, I'm gonna split that and give about half of it to carbohydrates, which is gonna put me, put me at about 500 grams of carbs per day, and the remainder will go to fat, somewhere between 120 and 133 grams of fat per day. I'm not prepping for a show. I'm not overly concerned with how much body fat I do or don't add during this time, and so I'm going to give myself some room for this to not be an exact science. Also, this fitness shit, it's just not that serious, and a few of you could stand to be reminded of that. Training, the best part. I've always loved training. It's what got me into this in the first place. Just came out with a video about all the things I've learned over the last 15 years of training that uh, you should go check that out as well. Tons of good tips in there. But there really aren't any revolutionary ideas here in my training. I'm gonna be following a pretty standard push-pull leg split, training each group twice per week. I'm gonna be focusing on progressive overload with relatively low volume. We're focusing on one main exercise per body part, per group, and it's gonna be kind of an A-B training split where the first three workouts aren't different from the next three workouts, but over the course of multiple weeks, the A workouts and the B workouts are gonna be the same. A lot of reasons for this, but just TLDR, a huge part of gaining strength and size in a movement is recruiting more effectively the motor units that allow you to be efficient and effective at that movement. And so the more often you do the same movement over time, the more strong you're going to get, and then the more you're going to recruit more muscle, gain more muscle, et cetera, et cetera. So, and would I gain more muscle training less frequently than this? Cause it's gonna be six days a week. Absolutely, no question. Three days on, one day off, uh, three days on, one day off, instead of six days on, one day off would be way, way, way more effective. But I love to train, it's the whole reason I do this. And so again, this isn't super serious. I'm not training for a show. I'm just trying to prove a point. And I'm, I wanna do this the way that I love to do it and show you guys that that's possible too. So if you made it this far, one, thank you. Two, I promised you guys I would show you what my starting point was for this whole thing. So I took these yesterday after my first pole session for this little challenge here. And I weighed in at 190.5. My working hypothesis for the next month is that I'll be able to break 200 pounds and be a relatively lean and mean, needing abs still visible, somewhere at least, 200-ish uh, pounds by July 31st, or July 21st, so a month from today. And that's, that's the goal that I'm aiming for. I love bodybuilding. I love the gym and I love pushing myself and just striving for that next rung on the ladder. I love the people that I've met and all the friends that I've met along the way and clients that I've gotten to work with. That said, I really do hate to see what's happening because of social media and all of these young people just making bad, frankly, bad decisions. I don't fault them for that. I made the same choices. This is not me trying to be holier than thou and hypocritical. It's trying to save people the pain by share, sharing my experience so that they don't have to go through what I went through. And I'm hoping that for the people who do choose to follow along with this, especially the young people who choose to follow along with this, I hope that they're encouraged to train hard, take their diet at least semi-seriously, show up for a long period of time. If they're contemplating getting on the sauce, just don't, or at least wait until you're old enough to do it in a well-informed and well-supervised manner. And I hope they decide to push themselves for as long as they can, as hard as they can, to see where they can go without any of these things. I cannot wait to share this journey with y'all. So make sure to drop me a comment if any of my experience resonated with you or if any of this stuff jumped out to you. 
And if there's any aspect of this that you'd like to hear more about over the next month and some change as I go through this journey, I'd love to hear that too. I'll be posting my workouts and numbers very regularly so that you're able to follow each step along the way. With that, till next time folks.